In the wake of inventive minds in the early 20th century, we've received so many inventions that ease our lives significantly. But these minds were so determined to make something, almost all of them ignored one question in the process. How is this going to affect the environment? Many new inventions might have changed human life positively, but when it comes to nature, it was affected badly. Lead gasoline, which received revolutionary results, made people's lives easier, but in the long run, made a generation's IQ lower because almost everyone in the world was affected by lead poisoning because of lead gasoline. But that's a story for another day. Today, we'll talk about a company that not only fought about the people, but also fought about nature and its welfare, Volvo. In 1911, a ball bearing company named SKF trademarked the name Volvo because the name means I roll in Latin, a fitting name for a ball bearing company. But this name was destined to have a much more glorious start. In 1924, engineer Gustav Larsson met Assar Gabrielsson, an SKF sales manager in a Stockholm restaurant. Both of them shared the evening and then realized they both share the same interest. Assar Gabrielsson and Gustav Larsson were shocked because it was nothing but a miracle for them to meet like this. It was like they needed each other and destiny had put them together in a room. Assar Gabrielsson had a big interest in making Swedish cars, but lacked mechanical knowledge. On the other hand, Gustav Larsson had the knowledge, but lacked the funding, something that Assar Gabrielsson had. Together, they decided to make unique Swedish cars that would be suitable for the harsh environment and rough roads that Sweden had at the time. It took only two years for Gustav Larsson to design and manufacture a prototype car, along with Assar Gabrielsson's generous funding. Both of them were ready to work with SKF. Therefore, they got to use the name Volvo, because SKF simply never used the name anyway. In 1927, Volvo Group was formed under SKF, and in the same year, they produced their first car, Volvo OV4, nicknamed Jacob. That year, 280 cars were manufactured. Volvo then introduced their first truck, the Series 1, debuted in January 1928, and it gained great attention outside of Sweden. They made their first bus in 1934, named B1, and with all these new vehicle productions, the journey of Volvo began. Volvo had a big advantage in Sweden, which other automobile companies lacked, or simply didn't think of. Most of the automobile companies were making cars for either the elite class or the middle class people, but almost every time they didn't think about the roads that the cars would be used on. At the time, Sweden's road structures were not as good as other countries, due to the harsh weather conditions this country was facing. Volvo had this in mind when they were making their cars, therefore the end product came out way safer than the imported cars that Sweden was bringing in. Another big factor of their early success was the quality of steel that they were getting from the local source. Sweden produces some of the most high quality steel in the world, and Volvo took advantage of this as well. In 1935, SKF sold its shares to Volvo Group, and in that process, Volvo Group became an independent company. Their innovative thinking and always thinking about the people and nature paid off in 1944, when Volvo released their first unibody car, the PV444. This car became an instant hit in the USA, and Volvo's premium quality car gained popularity day by day. Volvo was also working on other automobiles, like trucks and buses. During World War II, Volvo was also working for the Swedish military and helped them make the Stridsvagen M42 a medium tank for the Swedish army. Volvo's trucks were gaining big popularity during the war. Volvo's long-time experience in making cars for rough roads came in handy in war. When other companies were also working on making off-road vehicles, Volvo was dominating in this one sector because they knew exactly what needed to be done to produce such vehicles. From the beginning, Volvo never stopped in any crisis that they've faced. Instead, they keep going and make the best out of any situation such as war, and they thrive. In 1955, Volvo started exporting their cars in the US market. The very first car they sent was the Volvo PV444, and in just two years, Volvo became the second biggest import brand in California. In 1959, 
engineer Nils Bolin invented the three-point seatbelt for Volvo. During that time, Sweden still faced problems such as reassuring the driver and the passenger's safety. This three-point seatbelt turned out to be a huge success and quickly made its debut in Volvo PV544. Volvo patented this invention, but decided that such invention should not be an option for only a handful of people. It should be available for everyone. Therefore, Volvo opened the patent for everyone, and that became an essential part of the car in later years. This wasn't the only invention that Volvo gave up for the public service. In 1964, Volvo tested their rear-facing child seat prototype, and in 1974, they launched the world's first child booster cushion, which also became a mandatory feature for a lot of parents' cars in later years. In 1976, Volvo launched another innovative product, the Lambda Sonde. This little oxygen-sensing probe reduced exhaust emissions by 90%. Again, Volvo opened their patent, and today, almost every petrol car has one of these. That same year, the US government declared Volvo 240 the safest car, and made the car a role model for other automobile companies to follow. The Volvo 240 was the study material for the automobile industry about how to make a car and ensure the driver and passenger's maximum safety at the same time. The Volvo 240 became the USA's cleanest car in 1978. Volvo is still following the same mindset they followed all these years, keeping nature safe from the innovation they're bringing to the world. They used fossil-free pure steel to make their product, and powered their factories from hydroelectric-powered electricity. When other companies are introducing new, cool features, Volvo's main priority always stays the same – safety of the people. This is why Volvo's customer core stayed more loyal than any other company in the world. But that doesn't mean Volvo is out of the competition. Volvo is the ninth richest automobile company in the world. Their cars stay on top of the demand chain because of the quality that they maintain. Their operation expanded over 19 countries and produced over 600,000 cars in a year. With the huge demand, Volvo makes sure to keep the profit margin low so that more people can afford quality, safe cars for them. But if we change the sector and look at the heavy duty vehicles such as trucks and buses, Volvo is probably the best automobile brand in the world today. Volvo is a unique company. No other automobile company started their journey like Volvo did. And because of that, Volvo's journey became a huge study point for other automobile companies, even today. Their motto never changed throughout the years, and their quality never dropped. They shared their knowledge with others so that the general population could gain from them, something only Volvo can feel proud of. Because of their respect towards nature and the cultural impact they've left in an industry such as the automobile industry, Volvo is a company anyone can feel proud of, and I believe that's how millions of Volvo's customers already feel.